The Lupe Fund is celebrating 20 years of service. Their president joins us to discuss how that organization is making a difference in empowering Latinas to become leaders. It's so here on the next Latino Motion. Join us. Choose to get lost in the woods to gain experience in forest management. Choose to travel through time to understand the past. Choose to soar to pursue a career in dance. Stockton University offers 50 high-quality academic programs, small class sizes, and affordable tuition. Choose to match your interests and talents at one of New Jersey's nationally ranked universities. Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is presented by Latino Motion Public Affairs Media, a New Jersey nonprofit corporation, and Stockton University. This edition of Latino Motion with Bert Lopez is brought to you by the HD Studios at the campus of Stockton University. Funding for Latino Motion is provided by Atlanticare. For more information, call 1-888- 569-1000 or visit atlanticare.org. Atlantic City Electric, energy for a changing world, and South Jersey Gas. Welcome to Latino Motion, a weekly interview show highlighting issues impacting New Jersey's Latino community while advancing understanding of Latino cultural heritage and contributions to our society. And here is your host, Bert Lopez. Buenos dias and welcome to Latino Motion. I'm happy to have as my guest, Eva F. Mosquera. She is the president of Lupe Fund. It's an organization that is really spearheading a lot of the uh, leadership uh, for Latinas here in the state. And Ivef, I'm so happy to have you. Welcome to Latino Motion. Thank you so much for having us, Bert. I'm so excited and honored to be here. Well, listen, you just have uh, your organization just uh, celebrated 20 years of service, and you did so uh, by being on the world stage, by ringing in the uh, bell uh, for the New York Stock Exchange. That was an exciting time. Tell me about that activity, that event. There was no better way that I could think of to begin our 20th anniversary of this organization. We just happened to write to the New York Stock Exchange, tell them about, we told them about our history. We told them about the fact that we're celebrating 20 years. And a couple of days later, we got an email saying, you're invited to ring the bell at the New York Stock Exchange. I was in shock, but at the same time, I was gratified because it meant that they really saw the importance of an all Latina organization ringing the New York Stock Exchange. It's a big deal. The New York Stock Exchange is seen by millions uh, daily around the world, not just in the United States. So, and I dare to say, I don't want to put this in quotes because I'm not sure, but we might be the only all Latina organization that has rung the bell. Um, so, Again, I haven't been able to verify that, but well, I'm almost you. Know. I do have to tell you. What do you that, think? That was probably the largest group of Latinas we've seen uh, at the New York Stock Exchange. So it was a great event and certainly a, a great deal of pride for all yes. of us here in New Jersey, because not only are you representing Latinas, but also the state of New Jersey. You have some very powerful women who are part of Lupe uh, and certainly uh, very powerful women who were part of the organizing 20 years ago. Uh, of Lupe. Tell me about that. So back in the early 2000s, um, there was a group of Latinas who went, came together. They were professional, you know, Latinas from all walks of life. They came together and they helped uh, Jim McGreevy. They were originally called Latinas from McGreevy. They helped Jim McGreevy um, become governor. And when they did so, they were so successful that they said, well, why don't we do this for Latinas? So that's where the idea came out. And the founders, one of them being Zulima Farber, the great Zulima Farber, um, who used to be a New Jersey attorney general, she and her colleagues, Gloria Soto, there's too many founders, by the way, for me to name. Um, but there was a group of powerful Latinas who said, why don't we do this for Latina? So what they did was they founded Lupe. And at first, it started off as an advocacy group only. Then it became a 501c3. And then we added the Political Action Committee, the PAC. 
in 2000 and 501c3 was founded in 2006 and the PAC, I believe it was 2009 and the C4 was 2003. So our roots officially began in 2003 and that's why we're celebrating uh, 20 years this year. Um, so what they said was, let's get together and get more Latinas into elected office, okay? Especially, you know, back at, in that time, there weren't that many at all. I think this year was a record number of Latinas holding elected office, according to uh, COP and other, you know, places that track these numbers. And, you know, it was so exciting to see that, but it took them a lot of work. It took us a lot of work. And so our founders... Um, were able to get together and get people like um, they supported, for example, you know, Senator Nelly Poe, Senator Teresa Ruiz, um, you know, so many wonderful, you know, trailblazers, trailblazing Latinas who have been members of Lupe and were with Lupe from the beginning. Um, and now, as you can see, you know, you see where they are. We have a Senate majority leader who is a Latina, you know. Um, and we're so proud of that. We're so proud of everything that she has accomplished. And we're so proud that we were, you know, part of that, that history. Um, yep. So that's where it began. And then through the years, uh, our services and our programs have expanded to include leadership development opportunities and professional development opportunities for other Latinas, not just people who want to run for office. Um, we want to see more Latina leaders in corporations, in healthcare, in education, on commissions and boards, you know, all across the board. What we strive for is true equality for Latinas. And I know that one of those trailblazers is Peggy Anastas, uh, who's oh. obviously uh, been involved uh, and it's the uh, president emeritus of the organization. Um, yes. and, and, you know, the success is certainly uh, been very uh, evident uh, tell me what you tell young Latinas uh, about the importance of engaging with your organization. Obviously, it's not just about politics. Uh, it's leadership, right? You're, you're instilling that uh, Latino leadership skills right. in all walks of life. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about, uh, you know, what message you give out to those young Latinas. So I just want to first say that Peggy is one of those people that is tireless. She has been our guiding light. She has been um, a guiding force behind the success of Lupa, to be honest with you, because she's not only been with the organization from the beginning, but she has invested her time, talent, and treasure into this organization to make sure that we grow and that we continue. So I just want to you know, show my gratitude for Peggy because she continues to be so active and, and energetic and, and we couldn't do this work you know, without her, but it is because of her, I think, and of course the founders that we expanded our services to include other leaders. Um, so for example, whenever there's a company or an organization, let's say the governor is looking for Latino representation or a commission or a board, they turn to us. They might call Peggy, they might call Sarah Pena, who's also one of our former presidents, they might call myself and they say, look, you know, we're looking for, you know, a Latina in this area. I don't know, healthcare, law, education, you name it. And we have a roster of really talented women, um, professional women who 99.9% .9 of the time can fill any position of leadership. And so, you know, part of being a member of Lupe includes that you are now part of this network. And it's not... Um, you know, small network, it's a big network of professional women. These are doctors, these are lawyers, you know, um, experts in their fields, very successful women. So, you know, when we talk about leadership, we want to make sure that we are inclusive of all types of leadership, right? We want to see women, of course, you know, elected to council, elected to boards of education, you know, become senators and assembly people. But we also want to see more women in the C-suite. Yeah, and that's, so that's exactly uh, a lot of the work you, you have done. And certainly uh, I, I want to just point you back to the young Latinas, right? Those who yes. uh, need that extra uh, mentoring from these very powerful and experienced Latina so that they could get to that next level. What do you tell those Latinas in terms of getting involved with your organization? So informally, our founders, people like Peggy have been mentoring us 
the younger generation for years, since the beginning, they've been our mentors. And, you know, we've seen so many of our, let's say, scholarship winners. We started a scholarship back in 2011, and the scholarship until now has given almost, we're very close to $100,000 away in scholarships. Those young women, a lot of them stay with us. They become board members. They become professionals. They come back. They donate a scholarship back to the organization. And so what I say to the young women is take the time to volunteer for an organization that you admire because you're going to meet people that will guide you through the years and they will mentor you. And that's what our board members have done. In one way or another, they have mentored the younger generation. And now we have so a we formal want, mentor up, program. I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off because uh, we, we need to take a quick break. We want to continue that line of discussion, right? And we'll be right back with more Latino Motion. Welcome back to Latino Motion. We continue our discussion with Eveth Mosquera. She is the president of the Lupe Fund. And Eveth, we were talking about uh, some of the great mentoring and the successes that your organization has had uh, with a lot of powerful women who are leading the charge in terms of, uh, you know, really giving back and, 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 and bringing uh, more women up in, in terms of leadership. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about that in terms of the mentoring. I know you have a couple of success stories and you could just very briefly uh, tell me about those success stories uh, that your organization has helped push these ladies along in, the, in, in their careers. Yeah, so we have amazing scholarship winners and, you know, we have so many success stories. Um, just the two or three that come up to my mind is we have a young woman who went to medical school after, you know, she was in college when she got our scholarship, she went on to medical school and now she's an OBGYN specialist. She's of Ecuadorian descent of immigrant parents and she really worked hard, you know, to, to be a great student. And then um, we have another young woman who is also a scholarship recipient who is not only serving now on the board, she was our vice president last year and now she's director of disabilities for the um, Union County. And I can go on and on. No, that, that's great. So uh, obviously the scholarship along with mentoring has been one of your important programs. Tell me about some of the other programs you have. Yeah, so we have this really great program called Elección Latina. It's a nonpartisan uh, training program for women who wish to run for office. But we've evolved also to include people who want to help to uh, other women run for office. So let's say if you do not want to be a candidate for, um, you know, a, a political candidate, you can help someone by working on their campaign and learning what it takes to run a campaign. And um, and these skills really go a long way for other industries as well. Once you learn how to run a campaign and and fi and fundraise, you know, that can translate into any other industry. That's one of our programs. The other program that we have is the Power of Women. Power of Women is our annual award ceremony and it's paired up with our scholarship awards. At that event, we give out awards to trailblazing uh, Latinas. And even one Latino, we call them our Amigo Award. Um, we have a lot of male supporters and we appreciate them so much. And um, so at that event annually, this year, of course, we're celebrating our 20th anniversary. We also give out scholars, the scholarships to the young ladies who, who won the scholarship. Um, that's a really uplifting event because we get to meet the families of the scholarship recipients and we get to see all of our supporters in one room. Now, you also have a, a great partnership with Rutgers University. You want to tell me a little bit more about that? So with Rutgers, we used to have this program, the Elección Latina used to be um, only at Rutgers at the Center for American Women in Politics. And we've actually moved. We've moved the Elección Latina to Kane University. We have a really great partnership with Kane. Um, and of course we love our, you know, our friends at Rutgers, but we decided that it would be great to expand, you know, and serve more communities and not just, you know, the Rutgers community. And Kane University, the Department of Government Affairs has been very helpful to us and they have hosted, you know, our election Latina last year, and they might once again host us again this year. No, so it sounds like uh, you, you do have some great partners. Uh, tell me uh, again, what 
uh, people have to do or young ladies or uh, uh, leaders uh, who want to get involved? What do they need to do to become a member of your organization? So it's pretty simple to become a member. You can just go online on lupanj.org and become a member. We have different tiers of membership. We have three tiers. There's a free membership for anyone who just wishes to receive our emails and communications. There's a student membership because we realize that students don't have a lot of money. Um, so we have a discounted mem membership for them. And then we have a professional membership. The professional membership is the one where we make sure that we connect with you, you, you join this network of women, um, and you might be called upon, you know, at some point, if we were looking for someone, you know, someone is looking for a specific uh, position to work in, a commission, a board, you know, that's how you begin the connections. Um, and there's other benefits that go along with it. For example, for the New York Stock Exchange, we opened that up, we, we, there was a limited number of seats. So we opened that up only to our paid members. So that was a really great perk. Uh, sounds exciting. Uh, again, uh, to participate in the programs, obviously you could get that, all that information, how to become a member, you could get all that information on the website. And can you repeat that website again? Sure, it's lupanj.org, lupanj.org. Go onto the membership tab, become a member, and you can sign up for different committees. Once you volunteer, I think we were talking about this a little bit before, is we have a lot of volunteer opportunities. When you volunteer for a committee, you get to know a lot of these women. And then they open up the doors for you. You know, you talk, you network, and you get to know each other. And once you tell them, you know, what you are into, what you your profession is, someone might say, oh, guess what? You know, some my colleague at such and such place is looking for a person to fill the spot, you know, and that's how you begin the networking. So it's a great opportunity, especially for the younger women, but also for seasoned women, because a lot of seasoned women love to go out there, give back, network and, and, and grow their networks as well. Obviously, civic in engagement, civic involvement has been a hallmark of your organ organization. Um, and we see that uh, it, it is a challenge within our Latino community uh, for a number of reasons, uh, whether it's economic, cultural, uh, to get mm -hmm. more Latinos involved. Uh, what's uh, your uh, approach to trying to get more of the community civically engaged? Thank you. You know, that's how we started. We started because we wanted more Latinos, Latinos and their families um, involved, right, civically, because we realized how important it is that our vote count. And we want Latinos to understand that their vote matters and it makes a difference locally, statewide, you know, with everything going on. We want to make sure that Latinas have the facts. And so what we do is we go out there, we do voter registration, we do education, voter education, we do um, educational workshops, we can go out there if you need us to go to a school, a university, you know, talk about the importance of voting, we have people who can do that for you. And we have resources also. We have a great partnership with the League of Women Voters of New Jersey, and you know, they have a lot of resources and tools and we just want to make sure that our Latinos know how important it is to vote and how important their vote is, you know, to their families. To Every day, you know, our um, lives are affected by people who represent us, right, and who pass the laws. And so we try to spread as much information as possible and, and facts. And I know, obviously, that uh, not everyone is able to vote uh, where they're, they're undocumented. And there's uh, quite a number of social issues uh, that our community has to wrestle with. Um, and is your uh, organization also involved at the very grassroots level uh, to, to help that uh, engage that community? We do. We advocate for everyone, not just um, citizens, not just residents. We want to help everyone. We do partner with some of the local uh, women's organizations that help you know, immigrants. We wanna make sure that they also have the tools to get ahead because you know, just because you can't vote doesn't mean that you don't you know, give to society. And you know that how much immigrants have given to the society already. Yep, and uh, certainly there's a, a number of other social factors that uh, we like to discuss, particularly challenges for Latinas, 
uh, we want to take a quick break and we'll we'll cover that subject in just a moment. We'll be right back with more Latino Motion. Welcome back to Latino Motion. We continue our discussion with Yvette Mosquera. She is the president of Lupe Fund. And Yvette, I know that we uh, covered a lot of ground, certainly in terms of your involvement, the organization, and all of the great work that you're doing. Um, one of the things that continue to be a challenge for women, uh, certainly for Latinas, and I'll quote uh, uh, from the Center of American Progress, that Latinas still face a, a larger disparity and health and economic impacts from COVID. Um, so there are a lot of challenges for Latinas. And uh, what message do you give out to the rest of the Latino community in terms of addressing those challenges? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, you know, most of our Latinas and their families are frontline workers, right? They were, in the, they were in the front lines during the pandemic. They were drivers, they were housekeepers, and they were putting their lives in danger for the benefit of their you know, society. And we're grateful to them for that. But that came with a consequence. We lost a lot of Latinas, we lost a lot of Latinos. And what I say is, you know, when you go to programs, like workshops, educational workshops of organizations, not just like ours, you know, there's a lot of programs out there that, for example, the New Jersey Department of Health is doing to educate people um, in Spanish even. Um, I, would, I would encourage people to do that, to participate more civically, especially, and their local board, board of education, because those are the decisions, those people are making the decisions that affect their families, right? At the local Department of Health, you know, go and ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions of your doctor even, of your, you know, far too many times I've seen, even within my own family, you know, that we don't question what a doctor says. Oh, el doctor dijo esto, so you just, you know, you just go with it. You know, if you don't feel that something is right or you're not getting the care that you need or the care that you deserve, I would definitely say, ask questions. Don't be afraid um, to question, you know, the authorities. You want to do what's best for your family and, and, and find organizations like Lupe, like, you know, in the state of New Jersey, like the League of Women Voters that have those resources that will, um, you know, help you. And I know, obviously, for Latinas, uh, particularly, it's a challenge in terms of becoming engaged in those activities, particularly if they have children. And I know that, that balancing the family uh, and, and, and being engaged and civically involved. And yet you see a lot more Latinos involved than you do so, that you see Latinos in terms of civic involvement. Uh, how do you explain that? I think we just get it done. <laughs> I think Latinas, it's just ingrained um, in their being that they want to work harder. You know, um, I just think that it's a matter of prioritizing. When you see that you're going to make a difference for your children's lives, you will do anything. You will make time to go out there and get involved. And so I encourage it because it is, doing good for our community. Um, you are helping not just your own children, but you are helping other children. You know, unfortunately we have a lot of young people, you know, who may not have their parents here. Their parents might be in another country. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, our community is very good at, with giving back and helping each other and lending each other's, uh, lending a hand to each other, to their neighbors. Um, so I just think it's just a natural thing that comes to Latinas is, to go out there and, and make a make a difference. And obviously, I don't think you could mention Latinas without mentioning children. Um, and uh, a lot of Latinas obviously juggling everything, including uh, perhaps working outside the home and, and children uh, and, and their schooling. You mentioned the importance of being involved, particularly in uh, medical decisions with the doctor. And the same thing goes with schools uh, as well. Uh, I know that we have some exciting news uh, regarding uh, uh, health care for children uh, that's recently were announced that it that covers all, including undocumented children. Tell me more about that. 
oh yeah, the governor recently signed this law that will give uh, healthcare coverage to all children, no matter their status. And you know, we support that, and we think that that's important because healthcare should be everyone's right. It's uh, it's a human right. It's not just for people who are citizens or residents. You know, this country is a country of people from all backgrounds, and so our children, especially, you know, it would benefit us economically even in the future if we had healthier children, if we had healthy families. You know, we see, um, unfortunately, a lot of health disparities within the Latino community. But if you have good health care and you have insurance, you can address those health disparities and you can get the help that you need. And we're hoping that this in the future will benefit our entire society. Uh, yeah, certainly. Uh, I know that uh, one of the big areas for Latinas uh, leading the charge, and, and we mentioned how Latinas are always involved, it's on entrepreneurship. It mm. seems that uh, uh, ahead of the curve of everyone else in terms of starting new businesses are Latinas. Uh, mm -hmm. What more can we do to help those entrepreneurships? And, and is your organization helping in some regard in that area? Yeah, so um, I don't know if you heard, but I think Latinos are the fifth biggest economic um, driver in the United States. And so it's important that we support entrepreneurs and small businesses, especially women and minority owned businesses. And how do we do that? We partner with a lot of organizations that are doing the work. You know, we like to support the statewide Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the Hudson County Latin American Chamber of Commerce, you know, the um, we, you know, we we go to their events, we make sure that we promote, you know, what they're doing, because we feel that, you know, we're not the only ones that are, you know, exist in this space. We want to partner with um, organizations that are doing good work for entrepreneurs. And we have a lot of entrepreneurs on our board. A lot of our board members are business owners and very successful company owners. And what they do is they mentor a lot of our younger members and even, you know, our members who are want to maybe start a new career after retirement. We give each other advice. And that's what we do. That's what our network does is we make sure that we give back and we're not selfish about sharing information and resources. Very important. Certainly uh, one of the areas that your organization could certainly uh, focus on is South Jersey. Um, obviously, you mentioned a lot of the organizations up in North Jersey, but, you know, South Jersey often gets neglected. And certainly uh, we'll, we'll be talking to you offline to see how you could have a bigger impact down here uh, in South Jersey. We would Jersey. love that. We would love nothing more. Now, we mentioned uh, we, we have a short period of time left, and I want to go back to the scholarships. I understand that you have a deadline coming up. Can you briefly cover that deadline? Sure. Um, right now, the deadline, the specific deadline is not set, but the application will come out in the next few weeks and it will last for, we usually have it open for about six to eight weeks so that the students have enough time to get their unofficial transcripts, recommendation letters, and then we'll make the, we'll give the awards sometime between May and June um, to the students. So, so just be on the lookout on our social media at Lupe Fund and on our website. Yvette, it's been great having you as a guest. Thank you so much uh, for joining us here on Latino Motion. Bert, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. Thank and you. thank you at home once again for joining us on Latino Motion. Have a good day. Choose to get your feet wet. To learn more about protecting our environment. Choose to read minds. To understand the human brain. Choose to get your hands dirty. To create a masterpiece. Stockton University offers 50 high quality academic programs, small class sizes, and affordable tuition. Choose to match your interests and talents at one of New Jersey's nationally ranked universities. Funding for Latino Motion is provided by Atlanticare. For more information, call 1-888-569-1000 or visit 
atlanticare.org. Atlantic City Electric, energy for a changing world, and South Jersey Gas.